Sh what's up, guys? And <laughs> ladies. And welcome back to another episode of Punker Mike's Custom Action Figure Showcase. In this episode, I'm going to be showcasing my custom Pizza Face, the Psychotic Pizza Chef action figure. Kick it! Alright, so kicking it off, if you guys aren't familiar with Pizza Face, he's a bad guy in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles universe. And unfortunately, the only appearance of Pizza Face was early on in the Playmates Ninja Turtle toy line. Never showed up in the cartoon, never showed up in the Archie comics, just the toy line. And that kind of sucks because the cartoon was heavy on the whole pizza gimmick. And I feel like Pizza Face would have slid right in line with that. I mean, I could think of a couple episodes of storylines where he would fit perfect in, but for whatever reason, never made it outside the toy line. And I had this action figure as a kid, and he was always one of my favorites growing up, just because how obscure and unique he was, and the sculpt was just so nasty, and he's just a great figure. So his bio reads that he's affiliated with Shredder and the Foot Clan, and he had a plan to become the most powerful pizza chef ever. So, he zapped himself in his retro mutagen oven, hoping the energy would bake him with badness. But, Ninja Turtles came in, yanked him out of the oven. Now, dude is pissed that the Ninja Turtles foiled his plan. So, possessing the power of Pizza Pie, Pizza Face is the ultimate Ninja Turtle nightmare. Traveling from pizza parlor to pizza parlor, he terrorizes the Ninja Turtles, trying to turn them into tasty teen toppings. Armed with flying, piping hot pizza and a pizza box shield, this peg leg pizza piper follows the foot even though he's only got one good leg. And what's worse, he delivers. So I imagine he'd be like the head chef at Ninja Pizza or something like that. But definitely affiliated with Ninja Pizza. You can see it's got Ninja Pizza on the original figure on the box shield. And if he's affiliated with Shredder and the foot, you know, it makes sense. So I've already gotten started on my Pizza Face custom. So basically I'm trying to make a 1 12th or a 6 inch scale version of Pizza Face. Fucking nasty Playmates figure that I loved when I was a kid. So recently, thanks to Does Machines 84 on Instagram, I came across Turtle Milk Studios. And he was one of the original concept designers and sculptors for a lot of the uh, Playmates, Turtles, and Bad Guys. So he has available on his eBay store an unreleased prototype head. That's a cast of it. This is the head that was on there. So I heated and popped the head off. He had a peg right here. So I actually cut the peg off and glued it onto the pizza face sculpt, the turtle milk's pizza face sculpt. So what I did is I got a needle, or it's like a pin, and I stuck it in the head cast, super glued it on there, and then heated up the uh, peg a little bit and pushed it on the other part. So that way there's something that's nice and not glued on there. And then I used Loctite super glue gel to help secure it on there, fuse it on there really good. So then, after the head's all painted and ready for assembly, I'll just heat up the neck part right here. I should be able to just pop that bad boy right in there because this will be super soft. I won't heat this up to keep it hard. And just pop that bad boy on there. And I think that head just about perfect. That's so gross. So this custom is made up of a couple different parts. So starting off with the base, the body is a Mezco Fat Bastard figure. The Sumo Fat Bastard figure from, I believe, the movie Goldmember. Great figure. Figure I've owned it for a long time and I finally picked it up for this custom. So I modified the hands from a Soda Street Fighter Sodom. Punker Mike, did you say you destroyed a Soda Street Fighter figure for a custom? You damn right I did. And he's got the two weapon holding hands and then he's got an open hand as well. And then his left boot comes from a Soda Street Fighter Zangief. Punker Mike, did you say you destroyed another Soda Street Fighter figure for a custom? You damn right I did again and then his right leg i have two interchangeable peg legs i got the big saw blade pizza cutter and then i got the big blade pizza cutter and they're both interchangeable both custom made out of just random parts and his hands are actually pretty good so i had to shave off the little little back hand protectors from him but size wise size wise those would be pretty good on there i just have to modify the peg hole so those to pop in i have to add a little bit of sculpt um because it's just about the right size, but you see how it's more oval than circular. So I just have to fill on the sides because this is more circular. But this is oval. So just to fill in the gaps. So that was nice. The hand's actually a good size where it could fit the meat cleaver and the other knife I have. The boot was a hard one. Because I'm thinking, you know, I want a good size boot. Um, again, going back to my soda. My broken soda figures, I have a Zangief, and Zangief's got a pretty good boot. So what I did here 
is with his foot, I heated and popped this off. Ugh. I heated and popped this off. And you can see there's no ankle pivot. It's just a straight hinge with limited motion. So that hinge is what I wanted. So I cut the hinge, I cut the foot off the hinge, and then so I cut the foot off the hinge and then I made a peg. So I kept some of the foot on there and I actually made a peg to pop in the peg hole. So that way he'll have ankle pivot. And it'll fit on you know the original leg, but give him ankle pivot. And then part of Zangief's boot, the upper part, like the tongue and the laces, I had cut that off. Of the Zangief leg, I shaved it down a little bit and just glued that on there and I'll be filling in the gaps with sculpt. Now one part that I'm kind of stuck on is the peg leg. So I have, I want to do two interchangeable peg legs. One with this pizza saw, it's like a Ninja Turtle weapon. I think it might have came with one of the 2000s, like 2000 splinter. What I did, I drilled a hole, I had this little like plastic pin and this saw blades from a neck uh, uh, stripe, the gremlin. So this will be a good leg. And then, so that's like the pizza cutter. And then this is kind of just like a random. I've seen pizza cutters kind of like this. I just wanted kind of interchangeable leg. So I was just going to peg in there. So I was just going to fill this with sculpt and then drill a hole and have a magnet on both sides to interchange them. The only thing is I was thinking of maybe having articulation. On the leg, I cut the disc off and then I cut enough room for this to peg in. You see how it's only pegged in there just a little bit? I'm not sure if that's gonna hold up over time. So you see, it pegs in there, but the only thing is, since it doesn't go that deep in there, there's a little side to side movement. Like I'll definitely have a magnet in there and I'd fill the side with sculpt, but since it only goes in a tiny amount, I don't think it's gonna work the way I want to or hold up. It would work definitely if I didn't want interchangeable. So say this would probably be the main leg right here. And then I actually got a plastic pizza box that I was gonna make a base for. Since it's at an angle, you know, I'll just cut it in because the original pizza face, he has the pizza cutter and then it's like stuck on a pizza box. So it's like a flat surface. So I was gonna do the same thing, have like a little stand. So if I say we're just to glue this in the disc hinge, I can have the range, but for interchangeable, legs i won't have that ability so this head is actually an unreleased prototype head for the original playmates figure by turtle milk studios aka david arshoski and fatty shout out to does machines 84 on instagram for putting me onto turtle milk studios so cool thing about this head sculpt other than it being super nasty and a little sharper than the playmates one is that the original gimmick that was supposed to be with this figure is it was supposed to have a removable hat and you remove the hat and he's got a nasty little dude sitting on top of his head. Nasty little fetus dude. And he's got a little pizza slice in his mouth. Super gross. So the original Playmates figure, uh, the hat's stuck on there. You can't take it off. You can see it's a totally different hat sculpt. So they decided not to go with the removable hat. Either because of cost or because this little fetus dude was just a little too savage. And look at this nasty little dude, bro. Dude's nasty. The hat's got a lot of good sculpt and detail. He's got a bunch of retro mutagen splashes and pizza sauce splashes. And this pizza face is just so gross. He's got the retro mutagen coming out of his mouth. He's got some splashes on the side of his head. He's got that hagger ponytail. More mutagen. He's got pizza sauce coming down from little dude dripping his little slice on him. Super gross. Love this head sculpt. And you can follow David Arshoski, a.k.a. Turtle Milk Studios. Uh, you follow him on Facebook. He's got an eBay store. That's where I got the head sculpt from. He sells them painted and unpainted. I got mine unpainted because I wanted to paint it myself. And you can check him out on Instagram, Turtle Milk Studios on Instagram. Oh, all right. All right, so I got some progress going. So on the body, I used a little bit of acetone and some sanding to clear off some of that brown belly fuzz and his pubes and everything so on the lower torso i got the tongue from that zangief boot sculpted and glued on there the modified foot peg so i could put his little butt on there is i filled it in with procreate sculpt or procreate sculpting putty and then i drilled a hole and then to reinforce the hole i put some milliput epoxy in there so that they both fit in nice and smooth and 
I always use either Milliput epoxy, the yellow gray mixture. And when this dries, it dries hard as a rock. Really easy to sculpt with this stuff. For beginners, it's perfect. This is the stuff I learned on and I still use all the time. But if you want something, because like I said, this dries as hard as a rock. If you want something that dries a little more flexible, a little more rubbery or pliable, uh, you can use Procreate Sculpting Putty. And this stuff, you can do the ratio to make it super firm. You can make it semi-soft or like really soft. So this is good for like sculpting hair or collars or anything that might like rub when you articulate it. So that way, uh, if it's going to dry hard as a rock, it's going to break like a rock. It's going to chip where this will have some flex to it. And then also did uh, some scars. So with the razor blade and my Dremel, I gouged a nice deep scar. So I thought like the kind of big staples, like the big staple stitches will look kind of cool. Thinking about trimming them up a little bit because um, this stuff, since it's a little soft, with the exacto knife, I can kind of trim them, make them a little thinner. Once they're painted, I'll see how they look. If I don't like them, I'll just redo them. And then same thing with the upper torso. Got some of that chest hair off. Big scar right there. Big scar on the back of the arm. Sculpt a little band-aid boy. And then he'll have his little tattoo right there on the arm. And then for the hands, I filled those in with Procreate. And then I dremeled those so you can have the interchangeable hands. So the primer I use is Chaos Black by Citadel. So that one I didn't paint yet. These ones I laid down a base coat already. And then I'll start mixing paint to match this flesh tone now. And then I'll start bringing out the sculpt. And this head is so awesome. Got the hat. So I'm going to do white with a little bit of purple accent. I never was a fan of the purple hat. I don't know. I didn't like it. So it's just going to be like dingy white with like a little bit to, a little bit of purple in the sculpt to make it pop. See how that looks. And then the base. So, you know, the, the pizza face guy, he had the saw blade leg, the original figure. He had the saw blade leg in the pizza base. Well, he doesn't need the base to stand. He could stand the way I reinforced the, uh, the leg. He could stand with either one. But I thought it'd be fun to have the little base interchangeable base boy so this was just like a little plastic pizza box it came from i think a buffy figure i painted ninja pizza on it which you can't really see cut a hole with the procreate sculpt i made some nasty pizza sauce coming out all splattered i just painted that up last night i think i might add some pepperonis to it give it a little more detail and then i'm going to glue this uh ninja star right there i made this little turtle dude i really like this little pizza i got it from a japanese blind box so i really like this one so i'm going to cast a bunch of these have different little gimmicks on it so like i'll have like a grenade on one i'll have ninja stars on one so then i got some detail on the arms too so he has a little band-aid the original figure had a little band-aid on his arm so i sculpted a little band-aid out of procreate dirtied that up all nice he's got the mom tattoo hand painted that he's got a shitload of arm hair hairy ass dude and then the figure's got a bunch of like scars and everything so i did a nasty gash these like butterfly stitches slash staple looking things. Thought it'd make it all extra grimy. Oh, and they got some more. Got another big old gash on this side. More crazy arm hair. So he's got the open hand as well. And then the open hand is also missing a finger because the original figure, he's missing a finger. And I made the open hand so he can hold the pizzas because, you know, part of his power set, he throws pizzas. And I made a bunch of these weapon pizzas. We'll get into those in a second. Oh, look at that nasty hand. Nasty nails. That stumpy finger. Still an open wound. And so the shirt is just an old, one of my wife's old shirts. And then what I did, same thing I did with the Joker figure from Akira, is that I just cut it to size, put a little bit of super glue with the glue brush, and then I put it on there. And then as soon as it was form fitting with powdered pigment and a little bit of paint, I just dirtied it up and made it look super grimy. And then these little splotches right here, so like on his titty right here, up there on his arm, all on his apron, those is actually 3D paint. So what I did, I just made some like splotchy, drippy, goopy designs, and then once those dried, I painted over them. So I painted them red, and then that neon retro mutagen green. He's got a bunch of chest pubes. And this apron is just from an old, I think like a pharmacy smock I got at the uh, thrift store. Just cut that to size. I actually dyed it in tea, made it super dirty. And then same thing with the powdered pigments. And then with the stretchy band, I actually reused this. I had some of that leftover band, again, from the Joker figure from Akira. Um, same thing, I dyed it, tied it in a little bow, so that way I could take it off if I wanted to. And you can see, got a little more weathered on the back. 
See his fucking back tits. My only complaint that I made the shorts a little too short. I should have made him just come down just a little bit more. So that way, uh, and it looks fine, but maybe just a little bit longer. That's my only gripe with my own figure. Big old butt. And a cool thing about using the elastic too is that I could just load up the back with accessories. I got the kitchen knife, I got the butcher knife. These are from um, NECA figures, I believe. And this is like a WWE like sauce ketchup squirt bottle. I actually repainted it. It was like a weird color red, so I repainted it and I made it ninja sauce and I put a little foot. I don't know why he would have a sauce thing, but in the original figure, he has like all kinds of stuff on his belt. So I'm looking at the weirdo shit. Like he had like a sauce container, um, like shaky cheese. He's got a knife. He's got a turtle on a mousetrap. So I figured having the elastic thing, I could load it up with a bunch of accessories and everything. So his one peg leg uh, just ports in. So he's got a hole. So this blade just repainted that. This is a blade from the NECA Gremlin Stripe. Then I also have the Pizza Cutter Blade. This is like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer weapon or something that I just modified. Had to repaint it. And then that bad boy just ports in. So he's got more hair on the legs. Loaded him up with hair. And then he's got another nasty gash on his leg right there. And then the boots were fun. So that's just a Zangief boot that I repainted. Just slide that on there and I believe this is like a it's like a hard plastic pizza and I believe it came from like a Buffy figure that accommodates both the uh, pizza cutter legs oh, all right. so painting is all done uh, actually the only thing I'm missing is his hat because I messed up on his hat so I had to restart that one so that one's drying but everything else is painted sealed good to go I just got to heat them up and assemble them together and then I just got to make his clothes. Also making some ninja pizza boxes. Cut those out. I just got to fold and glue them. Well, cut the rest of them out and then fold and glue them together. So for this dude's outfit, I'm going with cloth clothes. So for the tank top, my wife had this old red tank top that she's not wearing. And I think this is like rayon and spandex or I don't know what this is. But it's like a soft material. You can see like the knitted pattern is kind of small. So when you look at like a regular t-shirt that like you're wearing and say you look at action figure clothing like 3A or something, you can see like the knitted pattern is a lot tighter on the smaller clothes. So that's what I always look for when I look for clothes to use on action figures. Because if you use just like a regular t-shirt or say a regular pair of denim jeans, you can see like the stitching and like the knitting. It's the threads are really large and it kind of kills the illusion in my my opinion. I was a little stumped on the shorts because I'm not sure if he's wearing jorts, like jean shorts or what. So I was digging around and I found an old pair of blue sweats. And so sweats are kind of thick, but the pockets are thin. So I cut the pocket out. And this is the same kind of thing where you don't really see the large thick threads, stretchy material. And I think him wearing cut off sweats would kind of add to like how haggard this guy is. Because come on, look at this guy. He would definitely be wearing like cut off sweats in like a kitchen or something and then for the apron i have this old like pharmacy smock or nurse smock or whatever from the thrift store so i'm probably going to do a similar technique that i did with the uh, clown gang leader joker how i like super glued the clothing on there i didn't really sew anything i'm not going to cut it like individual like for the pants like i did him but like how i did with the tank top and everything so we'll see how that goes i'll have to mess around with that so i sculpted all the like this pizza sauce splatter Sculpted some pepperonis, painted that up. And then this is a Ninja Star from our Articulated Icons figure. I just glued that on there. And then this is a little turtle that I kind of sculpted. The shell actually came from like a Mega Bloks, uh, Mega Bloks Ninja Turtle figure. So I took the shell and then I just sculpted the face, well, the head and the arms and the legs. So for accessories, you guys already saw the Secret Ninja Sauce, the base, the two legs. The uh, knives that I got from NECA figures, this one's slightly modified, the three interchangeable hands. Also made some ninja pizza boxes, different colors, some white boxes, some brown boxes, made a stack of those. I got some open ones to display the pizzas, and of course, the pizzas. So I made the weapon pizzas because part of his power is he throws piping hot pizzas. And of course they're going to have different weapons on them, right? So this one's got like a grenade. This one's got a time bomb. 
So the grenade, not sure where I got that from, but I did paint it. This, I think I got it from like a Fortnite figure maybe? Not sure, but I repainted this. It's pretty good, right? The Ninja Star Pizza. That, and that looks a little suspect, but that is his finger. So his missing finger from his left hand. That's it right there. So originally the David Arshawski prototype, he wanted to have his cut off finger on one of the throwing pizzas because the original figure comes with uh, two throwing pizzas. But Playmates decided that wasn't such a good idea, a little too savage for kids. So decided to implement it on one of my pizzas. And threw a little Ninja Star on there too. Got the Retro Mutagen Ooze Container Pizza. Painted that bad boy up. I got the Butterfly Knife Pizza. Probably make a couple more. And then uh, these pizzas too, these are all, I casted, I had a pizza prop that I got from, I think like a Japanese blind box. I casted them, so all these are painted. Everything's painted from scratch. And I'm making more accessories for them too. I wanna make a Retro Mutagen oven for them, so that's in the works. And building a couple little companion pieces too. So I might make a second video. If not, I'll definitely post it all over my Instagram, but I'm currently making a couple more things for this guy, so stay tuned for that. So I got Pizza Face lined up next to my custom Miyamoto Usagi figure and my custom Casey Jones figure. And lining up next to NECA Bebop and Rocksteady, NECA Toon and NECA Movie Foot Soldiers, my Chris Serta the April O'Neil custom, and little bitch ass Danny, NECA Toon and Movie Turtles, SH Figure Arts Turtles, and NECA Mirage Turtles, NECA Cartoon Shredder and NECA Movie Shredder, Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope it inspired you. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. You can follow me on Instagram. My handle is punker underscore Mike. And we'll see you next time. Uh, so I... <laughs> oh, and then... Oh, shit.